Hello there! Welcome to the Wada channel. In our previous episode, we performed T-bar's assay using our fish samples. In today's episode, we will be measuring TBA value by standard curve determination. You may also have heard about TBA test, but they are just similar. T-bar's assay, or TBA test, measures secondary lipid oxidation products. The later stages of lipid oxidation can be monitored by spectrophotometric techniques and other robust tests that gives reproducible and reliable results. From sample homogenization, TCA extraction, and centrifugation, we collected a clear TCA supernatant extract. In principle, the spectrophotometric method in the previous episode measures the concentration of malondialdehyde or MDA and other thiobarbituric acid reactive substances or T-bars in our fish tissue sample. The addition of 2 thiobarbituric acid or 2-TBA in our TCA extract catalyzed by heat in acidic condition allows spontaneous reaction of TBA and aldehydes to produce a pink-colored condensation product of MDA 2-TBA complex that can be measured by a UV-visible spectrophotometer. The absorbance values of our samples with a known MDA concentration from the previous episode can be used to calculate the MDA concentration by standard curve determination. And then measuring T-bars or TBA value which corresponds to micromole MDA per kilogram sample. In our standard curve determination, we will be using 1 millimolars of TEP as our standard solution. To prepare this, we need to aspirate 22 microliters of TEP and dilute to 100 ml volumetric flask using distilled water. We will then prepare our working solution by diluting it 100 fold to achieve a 0 0.01 millimolars TEP as our working standard concentration. To do this, we will dilute 1,000 microliter of 1 millimolar TEP to 100 ml volumetric flask using distilled water. So why TEP? TEP or 1133-tetraethoxypropane is sometimes referred to as malonaldehyde based diethyl acetal. In an acidic condition, TEP is hydrolyzed and malonaldehyde is liberated. Thus, its methyl analog TMP or 1133-tetramethoxypropane can also be used in the construction of a T-bar's standard curve. Using the 1 is to 1 mole ratio of TEP and MDA product, it shows that 0.01 millimolars TEP standard solution gives an equivalent of 0.01 millimolars MDA concentration. A typical standard series consists of 5 sample solution of increasing concentration and a test tube containing a reagent blank. The solutions for the standard curve will be prepared using this table. Tube 0 contains the reagent blank, while tubes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 contains increasing MDA concentration in millimolars. In the preparation of standard solutions for this microvolume assay, we will mix 1 ml TBA and 1 ml standard solutions. We will then follow the same procedure from boiling the mixture for 40 minutes, cooling, and measurement of sample absorbances. Using the absorbance values of our standard solutions, we can plot these results simply using Microsoft Excel. Now that we have encoded the absorbances of our standard solutions, we will now construct a standard curve or a curvilinear model following the Beer-Lambert's law where concentration is directly proportional to absorbance. Using Microsoft Excel, click Insert, then select Scatter Plot. In this simple regression analysis, we will be delineating direct relationships between two variables. Known increasing concentration of our standard MDA solutions as our independent variable and their absorbance values as the response or dependent variable.
this plot shows that we have five data points and the best fitted linear regression curve passes through most of these data points. To do this, we need to select the data points, add trend line, choose linear, check display equation on chart, and check display R squared value on chart. Again, this plot shows the MDA standard curve for our T-bars assay. The equation will give us a linear model y equals mx plus b, where y is the response. Positive 216.89 is a slope, x is the concentration of MDA in millimolars, and negative 0.0042 as the y-intercept. The remaining ingredient is the r-squared value or coefficient of determination which is often used to give a better insight of the straight line even though it does not indicate the direction of the correlation. In this example, our r-squared value is 0.9979 while the r or its square root is 0.9989. For strict analytical work, r should be 0.9970 or better. We can now calculate the unknown MDA concentration of our fish samples from the equation y equals 216.89 minus 0.0042. We need to transpose this equation into x equals y plus 0.0042 divided by 216.89 to calculate the unknown MDA values of our fish samples. So that's it! The unknown MDA concentration of our fish samples are 0.0033 millimolars for sample number 1 and 0.0012 millimolars for sample number 2. However, T-bars or TBA value is usually expressed as micromole MDA per kilogram sample. TBA expressed as micromole MDA per kilogram sample can be calculated using this equation, where micromole MDA per liter is equivalent to millimolars MDA. Using dimensional analysis to convert liters to milliliters, multiplied by the ratio of 30 ml extracting solution to the weight of the sample used, and converting grams to kilograms. Thus, T-bars or TBA value expressed in terms of micromole MDA per kilogram sample are 6.58 for sample number 1 and 2.45 for sample number 2. So are we done? Not yet! What does 6.58 and 2.45 micromoles MDA per kilogram sample imply? Well, you may have noticed that these TBA or T-bars values can be higher or lower as compared to other methods or compared to other published results. Take note that each result is sample, method, or protocol dependent. Some results are commonly expressed as TBA value or number, that is, milligrams MDA per kilogram sample. However, there are some problems associated with this approach. Calculated TBA values should not be interpreted as absolute levels of rancidity. This stems from the previous literature indicating that a TBA value greater than 1 is an indication of rancidity. Several non-oxidation substances can interfere with a TBA assay and could give falsely high readings. T-bars value should also be used in tandem with other objective tests for a comprehensive evaluation of fresh and frozen fish quality. The details of these methods are presented below and can also be accessed from the previous episode. TBA values will also vary as a function of the method employed. For this reason, researchers should prepare their own standard curves, carry out recovery experiments, and calculate TBA values on a concentration basis. Even though 
The TBA test has some drawbacks. This classical assay is one of the most frequently employed methods for determining lipid oxidation in foods because of its simplicity and relative speed. Since the food system is dynamic, it is recommended that two or more methods will be used to obtain a more complete understanding of lipid oxidation. In addition, free radicals not only oxidize lipids but may co-oxidize other molecules such as proteins, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, vitamins, and pigments. That's it! Let's learn together online only here at Tiwata Channel. If you have questions or just want to share something about the topic, please comment down below. Like and subscribe! See ya!